Hey everybody, this is Evan Abrams. Welcome to another quality After Effects tutorial. Today we're gonna put stickers on things. We're gonna peel stickers on, peel stickers off. We're gonna look at two methods on how to do this with curved edges and flat edges, and it's gonna be great. And if you enjoy this kind of thing, there's a new tutorial every week on Saturday. So you should probably subscribe. And of course, if you find the tutorial difficult, you can always download the project file. But for now, let's fire up After Effects and put some stickers on things. So, inside of After Effects, the first thing we need to do is make our sticker content. So you can put whatever on stickers, I guess the name of your band or, you know, your friend's band, if you want to stick that on a subway and try to buzz market that. But in After Effects, we're just going to make something simple. So we're going to make a square that's 1080 by 1080, and we're going to name it sticker content, just so it's not confusing. And we don't need that long of a duration, let's say 30 seconds. Now, in here, we're going to put all of the things that we want inside the sticker. So, so we're gonna create like a new shape layer. In this case, we're gonna make a rectangle. You know, that rectangle can be, you know, fairly large, I suppose. You know, make sure that it is rectangular in shape. Maybe let's make it 900 by 450. That's a good size. We're gonna add a fill to it, and uh, we're gonna make that fill, you know, not that saturated, but that's good enough. And, you know, let's just round it the corners a little bit because round corners are really cool right now. There you go. So we've got this that will form the back of the sticker. And now it needs maybe some text like, uh, hello, my name is, you know, like those stickers that you get whenever you go do speed dating. I mean, I did that one time and uh, it is the best way to get rejected like 20 times in a night. And let's just create a spot for you to fill in your name if you want, filled in with white. Uh, sometimes I put down like funny joke names and uh, no one has any idea how pathetic that is. Squish that down and then stick it in there. Good, that's fine. I'm comfortable with how that looks, just like I'm comfortable with myself. So we are going to call this our sticker content and that is good enough. Now we are going to create a new composition. Let's call it method one. And this is going to be the first method we use to stick stickers on things and then peel stickers off of things. And we're going to make this the size of something we want to export, so like HDTV 108024. And now just bring out your sticker content into the timeline. And we're going to use an effect that is called the CC page turn, which is usually used for turning the pages of things, but we can use it for putting stickers on things. So drag that out onto your layer, and the first thing you'll notice is you get a point here, and when you drag that point around, it's already doing so much of the work for you that you can just peel stickers off, whoosh, just like that. So we're gonna set this up to have kind of the look we want. Change the back page to be none, uh, change the opacity to be 100%, change the paper color to be something a little bit darker, like so, and now we're ready to give it a go. Change the controls to be classic user interface, which means basically, instead of using just a point, it's gonna use a point and then a predefined fold direction that changes the angle of the fold, which kind of does, I mean, that does cool things all on its own. But anyway, we're not here for that. So we're gonna set the fold direction to be negative 45, and we're just gonna move this point until all of this shape is off and that'll be our starting position for the fold position and we're also going to hit u to bring up our keyframes once there's one down and that looks good so move ahead say like 20 frames perhaps and then we're going to set the fold position down to be 1080 by 1080 so it's down in the corner so it's stuck down like that uh, go ahead a frame and now we are going to need to flip the axis on which everything is rotating. We're gonna change the fold direction here, put a keyframe, again, you have to call up all your keyframes, and then just move ahead one keyframe here, and instead of minus 45, we want whatever's 180 degrees away from that. So minus 45, I guess add 180 to that, and now the thing is totally gone. And that's because when you flip the fold direction, that means that the place where it is no longer makes sense. We're gonna to need to set keyframe for the fold position, and then we've flipped it all the way around, so now the fold position needs to be zero comma zero, and then everything is back in place. So it's almost like this keyframe never happens. That it happens, you know, on this frame everything's good, on this frame everything's good, so everything must be good. Now to move ahead a keyframe, pull in that fold direction a little bit, pull in that fold position a little bit, like so, and then go ahead and take this thing all the way off. The end state is gonna have to be a little bit further, just so it pushes it off the screen, 
and that looks like we're all good. So it gets put down, and then it bends, and then it gets taken off. Take all of those keyframes, go into the graph editor, uh, we're going to easy ease them, and then we are going to take most of them, just the first ones here, and we're going to pull their handles, you know, towards the origin, but for the last one, we are going to take its handles and we're going to pull it towards the ending. That creates motion like whoop, bend, and pull. Good. However, there are limitations to this effect that just cannot be overlooked, at least by me anyway. The first is this constantly present white line. You can get rid of it by setting it to be perpendicular to the fold direction, so then it's gone. But if for your look you don't want it there, well, that's, that's too bad, because it's built in to what this looks like, which is no good, I don't think. And certainly you can blend it by taking various instances of the layer and stuff like that, but I really just don't want to worry about it. I think that's a thing that you should be able to turn on and off, but you can't because I didn't design this effect. Anyway, uh, the other thing is the fold radius. This is the curvature of this bend right in here, which is great if that's something you want. So if this is a style you want, that fold radius is perfect. If you don't want it, you can't set it to zero. You can't make it go away. You can go down to four pixels, but it's always going to be there, or four units, or whatever the four means. But you can never get rid of it. And that kind of cheeses me off just a little bit. And then I guess the other thing is that these aren't separate layers. You would have to, if you wanted to say, put something in between here, or, you know, maybe you wanted to have this roll off of like a, a rolling pin or something like that. If you wanted to slip another layer in between here, you would have to duplicate this layer, set one of them to render the back page, which in this case is ironically the thing that's in the foreground, and then set the other one to be rendering the front page. And then you can put things in between them because now they're separate. Which is great, but again, if that's really the spirit of the thing, then you'll probably enjoy my other method a little bit more. But that's about it for my gripes with this. I mean, the other thing that I gripe about is having to flip the direction midstream here, that I can't have one control for one corner and one control for another, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. So let's try the other method. We're going to create a new composition, call this method2 and again pull out the sticker content and splat it right down there. Cool. And now we're going to make a new shape layer and this shape layer is going to need a rectangle and that rectangle is going to need a size of 1080 by 1080 and it's going to need a fill. So just add a fill. I don't care what the color is. We're actually never going to see it because it's only going to be used as an alpha mat for layers below it. So select sticker control and give it an alpha mat of shape layer one. So everywhere shape layer one is, sticker control will be visible. And we can just change this to be called cover because it covers things. Now we're going to go in there and we are going to change its position around. We know its end state we want to be right here covering up everything, so that's good. Let's go ahead a couple of frames and just make sure there's a keyframe there for the position, just like this. Now go back to the start and we are going to drag this thing off by going to negative 540, so it's all the way off, and it kind of just wipes on, which is great. This is really working out for me. Now let's advance uh, a frame, set a keyframe there so it stays the same, advance another keyframe, and we are just going to move down, uh, I'm not totally sure how much, but uh, let's move down, let's say, from 540 to uh, 740. That's good. Now it doesn't look like anything's happening, but that's just because there is no content in the way. So we're going to alter the sticker content here just a little bit. So we're going to create a new null object in there. Good. And we're going to parent everything to that null object. And then that null object is going to rotate just a good 45 degrees. There we go. And then we go back to method two. And you can see, yeah, now it's bending that corner back. And don't worry about that it's askew. We'll fix that later. So just trust me and let's continue on this adventure. So we're here at this keyframe, move ahead and uh, move this to be at 540 plus another 540 plus another 540, which will move it all the way off the screen. So, but you didn't know you could just add things in here if you had to do like math and junk, but uh, you can, so that's good. So this is pretty much all the keyframes we'll need for the cover, uh, that's all good. Now we're going to need to have that bending over part of the backside of the label. 
What we're going to do is duplicate sticker content, which will put it up at the top, and we're going to give it a fill, and we're going to have that fill set to something dark, like so. Perfect. We would like it to be parented to the cover. So here at the point where the cover is all the way on, at 960 by 540, we are going to have the sticker control parented to it. This is vital that you parent it at this point. Needless to say, it's important when you parent things because now this thing's position is relative to the position of the thing it's parented to. Its position is zero, zero because it is zero pixels left or right and up and down of the thing it's parented to. So now we're going to keyframe this by setting a keyframe for its position. We know that it's totally fine that it be at zero, zero, no way removed from the cover at frame zero. But here at frame 20, we would like it to be down here at 1080 away from where it's at because we want it to have peeled all the way off the screen. It's no longer useful to us. It's gonna do that. Now we need to give it its own cover. So duplicate cover to make cover two, put it above the sticker content. And we are going to of course have this layer as track mat, alpha mat of that sticker. Hit to U to bring up the position here. Hit Alt and click on the keyframe and just pick whip its position to the position of the first cover and then delete all of those keyframes because we don't want to mess around with too many keyframes going on. So what does this mean? Well, it means that so far it looks almost correct. Uh, there is one thing that you have to do here, and that is that you have to flip this because it is supposed to be flipped over from where it was. So change its scale here, unlink them, set the second one to be negative 100%. Now I think you're good to go. So you can see that it kind of flops itself on just like that, so that looks pretty good. Now we just have to deal with the second part, and we're gonna do that by duplicating those two layers, call up the position for those. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna go here to where it's supposed to be totally off, so delete its keyframes, and we're gonna set a new one, so it should be you know, all the way up here, all the way gone at minus 1080. Set a keyframe there. We're gonna come down, do a little bit of math where we have minus 1080, and then we are going to add to it 200. There we go. And now move ahead to the end where we want it to be at zero, zero, all the way off. That looks like it works. Perfect. So let's see how that goes. Sticker comes on, sticker goes off. Select everything, hit U to bring up all of its keyframes. Select all those keyframes go into the graph editor and we are going to select them all and just easy ease those and we know that we would like to take you know these first keyframes here and we are going to pull all of their handles to be towards the one side and really just for the last bump we want to pull all of its keyframe handles towards the outside so that looks good have a look at the way that motion is coming on quickly and then away Great. Now the other thing we want to do is sort of bend this back to where it should be. So create a new null object out here. Take everything that doesn't currently have a parent uh, because they're lonely pretty much. And we're going to take those and we're going to parent those to this null object. And that null object we're just going to rotate to where we are kind of happy with how that looks. So for me it's when uh, that black solid is no longer in frame. And there we go. Now if you want to move that that solid there to be further away, then it gets easier to rotate it, but I'm happy with this kind of an angle. Now, if I wanna go in and I wanna change things in the sticker layer, I can change whatever I want. I can like move this around and move that somewhere and just be a total jerk about it. So then when we go back here, you can see that the sticker is sort of like adjusting sort of in real time to uh, where that's at. So that works. Uh, I don't know why you would wreck a design like that, but whatever. And the other thing is now it's easy to slip other layers between these layers. In fact, it's incredibly easy and worthwhile, but you know, it creates a perfectly straight and uh, marked out line, you know, no bends, none of that nonsense. So if your design calls for something with no bending in it, this is how to achieve that. Um, and hopefully this has been great. And now you can put stickers on things and introduce yourself to all kinds of people.
Anyway, I'm Evan Abrams. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. There's new tutorials here every week, so you should definitely subscribe. If you get stuck, you should put a question in the comments, and I'll try to help you out. And if you have suggestions for new tutorials, or you just have regular questions about After Effects, hit me up on Twitter, at EC Abrams, and check out our Facebook page, and the link is in the description for that. Also, if this is difficult, or you just want to see how a professional, i.e. me, does it, uh, check out the project file. Uh, that'll take you to evanabrams.com, which is also a great place where you can get other project files and interesting things you can download and use in your After Effects projects. So, I'm Evan Abrams, thank you so much for watching, there's new stuff here every week, and I will see you around the internet. Thanks again, and have a nice day.